Hello everyone, welcome back to the Integrity Botanicals YouTube channel. If you saw one of my more recent videos, I just reviewed, swatched, told you all about the Alima Pure Press Shadows, but they also have a ton, and I mean a ton, like almost 30 shades of loose pigments as well. And what I love about loose pigments is that they are very easily buildable. You can use them, I feel like, in a, a more diverse range of ways. And not only that, um, the pigments oftentimes better. I find that they blend a lot easier sometimes because the pressing process could sometimes alter the shadow. So when it's in this loose form, I love using them wet. You usually get the best metallics, which we're gonna get into that. But since there are so many shades, this is gonna be a two-parter. So the first part's gonna be all the satin matte shadows. There are 14 of them. So I'm gonna get through this as quickly as I can. Of course, another perk to loose shadows is that they are oftentimes cheaper, and this is the case in this instance. These are $14 with two grams worth of product. The packaging of them is super, super cute. So it's like as compact as you can get, I feel like. I mean, the lid may be a little much, but what I love about the packaging of these is those of you who are like, I don't like loose shadows, they're messy. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that these are uh, mess free by any means, but the way they have it set up, I feel like is incredibly genius. So they're relatively compact, which first of all, I like from a storage perspective. You can see the color through this middle area here and the bottom will have the color um, on the bottom as well. Now, when you open it up, you're gonna see this mechanism, which is so genius. It actually locks it into place. So if I was to start going like this, when it's locked, nothing's going to come out. So if you're traveling, like what I used to have to do is this like uh, put like a little piece of tissue and twist it over that to kind of keep it from spilling out of the edges. That's never going to happen here. So you just kind of pop open that little plastic part, boom. And then you can tap the shadow out as usual. So it's as clean as it can possibly get. And um, I like that the holes as far as the uh, where the product is dispensed out of are relatively small. Um, so it's not going all over the place. So um, I'm just going to get right into this. I always like dumping shadow into the lid. By the way, it's the best way I like to use it. All the shadows in the range are 100% vegan and gluten free. Um, and like I said, we're gonna start with the 14 matte shades. What's cool about the matte shades also is um, they have a great variety of tones. So you can use these in your eyebrows, which is a great way to use it. Um, you can use it as liner, you could use it as shadow. You could get creative to say the least. So let's just jump right into it. And I already did mention you can use these both wet and dry. So if you use them wet, it's going to intensify the pigment. And um, you know, I love doing that with shimmering shades and then using them dry in the outer corner. So let's just get right into it. First and foremost is the shade Bone. And you know I'm a, a Bone girl. I like having one of these shades in the collection for sure um, because it just helps blend out the brow. And what's so great about a bone shade is that bone is not too yellow, bone is not too white, it's not stark at all. So it's going to blend out the brow bone with ease and uh, get rid of any sort of harsh lines that there may be. Moving right along, they have a really great variety of neutral tones, which I like. So dependent upon your skin tone, you can use a lot of these as that brow bone color or as that all over base out sort of shadow shade. So next up we have the shade Fleur. Fleur, like I said, also quite pale, but it has a little bit more of like a pinkness to it. Um, so if you're going for more of that look, this can act like a brow bone shade or an all over lid shade, like I said. Not really quite deep enough for a transition shade, but a very beautiful shade um, nonetheless. Then we have the shade Fawn. Fawn again, very similar tone, but Fawn is just a little bit more brown and a little bit less pink. Fawn, if you're incredibly fair, you might be able to do this as a transition shade, but for me, this is still just a little bit too light. Like if you were getting really busy, you wanted to use a bunch of shadows, this could be one, um, but it does have that nice warm brown sort of tone, leaning a little bit peach, which is good for blending out any sort of harsh edges, and you can do that before the brow bone shade if you were getting real busy, like I said. Then we have the shade um, Camellia, which I believe is the name of a flower, if I'm not mistaken. And Camellia, again, very light shade. The most pink of them all. This reminds me of the Kierweiss Press Shadow in, Char not Charmed, in Angelic, it may be called. And I did a tutorial a while back where I used it all over the lid and I loved it with just some soft browns in the crease. So this is a really good, um, 
sort of neutral but has a little bit of color like a little bit more fun you could definitely do this um all over the lid i like doing all matte looks where you have like maybe a little pink here and then you really kind of smoke it out and pull it out with like some mid-tone to deep browns so it's soft but gives you that dramatic look which i love then we have the shade Blondes, and Blondes, of course, sounds like one of the brow bone shades, but for me, I actually really like this one as a transition shade. It has a little bit of warmth to it, um, definitely a little bit more pigment. Uh, again, it's not the darkest of shades, so it's a good lay this down. I do think um, in the crease, like because that natural shadow, it is a little bit more intense than it will appear on the swatch, but this has a good neutrally sort of brown tone to it, and I can imagine this being great in the brows if you have really, really fair brows and just want a little something something. Then we have the shade Bramble. We are finally moving into shades that are a little bit more rich in color, and you can definitely use these as your transition shade of choice. Bramble um, is pretty cool tones, um, almost has like an ashy grayness to it. So if those tones are more your speed, I could definitely see you liking that one. It almost has a touch of lilac to it. So if you're doing a purple look, this may be a good way to first lay down um, some crease color for you. Then we have the shade Auburn. Auburn, again, one that sounds really good for the brows, and I can imagine it um, being that way because it is a brownish shade. It's not like Auburn Auburn. Um, it's brown that leans just a little bit more warm, and I've used this as a transition shade um, 100 times. So it still is quite neutral. It's not terribly warm, you know, because I think that since they had that brow product in mind as well, they don't want it to be too warm because the brows are naturally ashy um, in color. So this is a great one. Um, as we start going down the line here, you're going to see that this is the type of shade that works beautifully with all the others. And these pigments, they blend so nicely and you do need just the smallest amount of product. So it's really easy to build these up, which I think is another perk of them. Then we have the shade Mahogany. Mahogany is a beautiful mid-tone brown sh shade. Um, this one's a little bit darker, however. I can imagine this one being a great liner but also good to help build up the crease because very complementary to the cooler ashier tones that i've shared with you such as auburn um bramble and blonde then we have the shade raven and raven something that's going to be the black shade that's often what these type of shades are called but it's not it's just an even uh more gray toned uh brown raven however has almost like a little bit more purple to it it's even more cool toned whereas raven almost has a green tone to it but don't be fooled i don't want to say like this is purple and this is green those are just the tones that i'm getting but again gives a very very natural effect i remember back in the day watching makeup tutorials they would always use like the, the your your brow shade in your crease because it's like mimics a natural sort of shadow then we have the shade espresso again we're sort of diving into the next stage of more deep shadows here espresso is just a beautiful rich um chocolatey brown again not too warm not too cool um there's not t too many warm shades um in here i will say in the other tones you'll notice that there are a little bit more um but that's what makes these very natural as i keep on driving home to you guys then we have the shade Lilac. Lilac is just a deeper sort of uh, purple tone shade. I find it interesting that it's called Lilac because I think it's it's darker. It's like a dusty lavender, but this is a really unique color. This type of color that is um, a good way to sort of step out your comfort zone a little bit. Again, very complimentary to a purple look, which Alima Pure has a pressed purple shadow that this might be really nice to add some dimension to it. Maybe I'll have to do with purple smoky eye for you guys. You know, whenever I'm swatching shadows, I get inspired. It's a lot of fun. Moving along to black violet, um, most certainly darker than um, the former shade, as you can imagine, lilac. But it's such a cool shade because though it is so much gray in it and so much charcoal, that little purple tone is definitely, definitely coming through. So again, a good one to play with. You can see it just how nicely that these shadows blend. That's one of my favorite part of loose pigments because they're not so tightly packed together that you really have room to sort of blend them around. But again, a definite more cool tone shade um, that has a little bit of purple to it. Then we have the shade black and you guys are never going to guess what color this is. Like really try. <laughs> it's black. So these loose blacks are really great because again, I'm all of this, a fan of this smoky sort of you know, pseudo liner type of deal where you're getting that same effect, but there's something so effortless about it and not as 
hard and it's a little less intimidating to do because there's room for imperfection and using something like this wet is great but what I've been liking to do and what I did in this um, makeup tutorial that you have here is I apply some like liner just to as a act as a base like something sticky for it to grab onto and then I smoke it out in that general direction so it looks a lot softer there's a sultry look about it and that's what shadows like this are perfect for and it acts sort of like a cake liner so you can use it wet dry anything in between finally i want to end with the gorgeous pop of color that we have my favorite in the entire lineup and that's the shade cobalt and again another one where it's really hard to guess what shade this is it's a gorgeous bright uh you know powerful co cobalt blue shade that makes the most amazing liner ever i've worn that in a video here i haven't shown it to you guys on camera but if you would like to see that video i mean the technique isn't terribly complicated of course it's the same you know wet it apply it as necessary but if you're looking for something fun for spring and summer she's got you covered right here that is a good one all right, you guys, I know this video is a little longer. I'm sorry. There were so many shadows. I want to just cram it in there. I will say a lot of the tones are quite similar. You definitely don't need all of them, but I like that there's a variety to accommodate different skin tones, different preferences. And, um, you know, there's actually, I haven't heard too much about these online, so I'm excited to share with you guys some swatches. You can always find those down below. Vegan, gluten-free, great colors. Um, at 14 bucks a piece, I don't think it's too shabby. So if you want to check them out, I'm going to have all the products listed in that description box down below for you guys to check out um, and don't forget immediately after this I'm filming part two which is gonna have all the pearl lusters and luminous shimmers which is almost another 14 shades or so I think another 11 shades that I have to share with you so I'm excited to share those so if you'd like to see it please do subscribe and thumbs up this video you can ring that little bell icon it'll tell you exactly when I upload because I do upload here twice weekly no set schedule just whenever I can get the videos up for you um thanks so much for all the love and support you guys I am so excited um to bring you some more swatches of my favorite shiny shiny things and um like I said anything you want to know leave a comment everything you need in the description box makeup I'm wearing blah 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 but thank you guys so much and i will catch you in the next one bye